everybody, Rubber Mold Man here, and I'm happy to announce this is the start of a brand new video series that we're going to be doing on this channel that it's going to be called Let's Paint a Statue. We've had so many comments over the years that uh, the number one request we have is more videos about painting statues. Uh, and the last few months we've been very busy as a family. Uh, we just moved to a new state, uh, our new home, setting up our new shop for work on that. We're finally settled in and we figured this is the best time uh, for us to start this series and what we're going to do is each episode we're going to do will be with a different statue and I'm going to show how I paint that statue from beginning to end that way you can watch maybe use some of those techniques on statues that are similar that you have uh, we also plan to be actually uh, making some of those same statues that we make that are going to be in the videos available for purchase unfinished so that if you want to actually paint that exact statue you'll be able to go to our website and purchase that statue and then paint it uh, just like it's uh, one of, you know, like the old uh, Bob Ross shows where you, you follow along and paint only with a statue. It's kind of what uh, people have been requesting. So we're going to try it and see how it works. Uh, with these videos, however, there's two things that I'm going to be uh, mentioning in almost all the painting videos. And so to start them, I'm going to have two videos that go over those things so I don't constantly have to explain it in later videos. And those two things are base coat and dry brushing. Now, these are both things I've talked about in the past in videos, but we're just going to do uh, two quick episodes for this new series just to get this out of the way so I can always mention you know if you don't know what I'm talking about go back to episode one on base coat and that's what this one's going to be is the base coat so what is base coat well that's literally what it says it's the base coat of paint on a statue so for this video I just grabbed this little gnome statue completely unfinished he came out of the mold he's been curing for a few weeks and uh, just been sitting there rough on that I'm gonna show you how I do a base coat why do you want a base coat two reasons it makes it easier to paint a finish on the item makes it uh, much quicker makes it look nicer and it's also going to make it last longer and i'll explain why now in this container i have some black paint now i'm going to do a black base coat on this most of my items that i do a detail finish are going to get a black base coat i also do gray base coats brown base coats it just depends but uh for this one i'm just going to do black since that's what i had this is just standard outdoor latex paint it's exterior grade latex paint your basic house paint yes you can use enamel paints for painting concrete i don't like it because enamel paints traditionally are oil based latex paints are water based and that's going to be key in what we're going to do here uh, now there supposedly are water based enamel paints out there i've seen advertised i don't understand what the point is of that since the whole idea is that enamel are oil latex are water based paints but traditionally, as long as it's an outdoor house paint, you sh should be fine. You want water-based. So with this paint, straight out of the can, it's nice and thick. And if you're new to this, you might think, wow, that's what I want to paint on the statue. Nice, thick paint. There's two problems with that. First of all, it's very hard to paint with thick paint right out of the can because it's going to be hard to get in all those grooves. Second of all, it's not going to uh, last. When you paint thick paint on dry concrete, what's gonna happen is that's basically gonna dry into a shell of paint around there. It might look ni nice at first, but over time, that paint's just gonna peel off. You want that base coat to last so that any paint you put on top of it is gonna last as well. So here's the little trick, here's what you do. You take your statue, and this works whether it's a tiny little statue like this or a great big fountain. Our family's been doing this for over 53 years. We did it with all of our statuary that we had to paint. We just take some water and we soak the piece. And when I say soak, I mean soak. I mean, you can literally, you know, if you're able to take the piece, set it down in the water. I don't care, make sure it's wet. The reason you do this is because concrete is actually very porous and it will absorb a lot of that water. You want that because that water uh, is going to go in those pores and when you paint it now it's going to absorb some of that paint into the pores thus it locks the paint into the concrete and makes it a very good finish makes it last longer in fact what I do is I not only wet the piece I will wet the paint and people ask me what ratio of water to paint I'm gonna guess 50 50 honestly I mean it's very watery so and then you can take it and as you see, it's going to be super easy to paint. It just goes in all the pores really easy, no problem whatsoever. Now, honestly, we generally don't do this with a brush. We generally do this on a large scale. So when it's a lot of small statues like this, we'll literally have a large vat that has uh, watered down paint in it. And we'll just soak them in that. 
And when we would do large statues and bird baths, like for instance, we have, you know, we do 30 bird baths at a time. We would get a big, uh, uh, it was a paint sprayer hooked up to an air compressor and we'd put extremely watered down paint in it and we'd spray everything down with a water hose first and then go over with the watered down paint. Now, if you're wondering, hey, if it's that watered down, is it gonna be streaky? Is it gonna show a little bit of the concrete through? Yes, sometimes, it doesn't matter. That's, this isn't about making the piece look good at this point. This is about putting a base coat on that's gonna allow you to make it look good with the rest of the finish you do on it. So that's pretty much it. Now I have some people that ask, do I paint the bottom? I don't. I, you know, you can get some on the bottom. I like to leave a little. There's, there's people out there in this industry that say if you paint the whole thing, you're trapping, uh, you're not allowing moisture to release from it. I've honestly never seen an issue with that, but uh, honestly, I just don't worry about it. You're here to look at the uh, top of the statue. Most people don't care what they look like underneath, but that's up to you. But as you see, just real simple, it's done. Now it dries, that's a base coat. That's all you need to do, whether it's the black base coat, gray, brown, whatever, this is gonna make finishing this statue so much easier. It's gonna look so much more detailed and impressive by the time it's done and it's gonna last a lot longer. So when I talk about base coats in uh, later videos, here in episode one, this is exactly what we're talking about. I highly recommend it. Our family's been in the business for over 50 years now. We've always done this. Once we learned this trick out, our statuary became some of the best around because it just looked better and it lasted longer, and that's the key. So I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, catch me with the next video we'll be doing in a few days and I'm going to show you what I'm talking about when it comes to dry brushing because that's going to be the other main thing that I use in my uh, videos that I want to make sure everybody's clear on and then after that we're going to start with the videos probably about every two to three weeks will be a new video with a new statue that you can watch and follow along if you like so all my contact info is below this video hope you enjoyed and we'll see you soon